bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Now is the time to trim your lamps and get ready for the coming of the Lord. Stay tuned for the Midnight Cry broadcast. Yeah, there was something that was said in the prayer meeting on Friday night that just kind of jumped out at me at the time, and I just trust that there's a reason for that, that it wasn't just something that, you know, interested me, but there was something said about hearing God's voice that just, uh, I don't know, it got me thinking along lines that we've certainly thought about before, but it, it may be especially relevant. You know, in the beginning, our first parents enjoyed an unbroken amazing relationship with God. I mean, it was so perfect and innocent that they, even though they were physically naked, they had no shame. There was just an absolute openness. Every day the Lord would come down and speak with them and talk with them and walk with them and, you know, how'd your day go? What's going on? And, and it's just, oh, I'm glad to see you, Lord. There's just a, an absolute oneness with God, a freedom. I mean, can you imagine what it would be like just to feel free? to enjoy the Lord and enjoy His presence. Well, that's what the Lord has given us, if we understand it. You know, we don't always enjoy it like we should. But, of course, we know what happened, that they chose a path of disobedience. And the moment they did, something happened. Suddenly, they were conscious of their nakedness. That's just how it happened to be manifested. But they, they felt a sense of shame. They felt dirty. They felt broken, they felt unclean and, and unable to just feel that sense of connection with God and freedom that they had, that they had had. And so you know what happened, that the Lord came down to the garden once again, and they heard the sound, and he's here, we better, you know, this is terrible, we got to hide. You know, think about what, what's going on here, what, where they had had the perfect freedom, now they had a, their, their instinct was to hide, was to run. Oh, I, I, something's wrong here. I can't just come like I am. I'm so, you know. And, and so that thing was broken, and they, they hid themselves among the trees of the garden. But then there was an amazing thing that happened. Remember what it was? The Lord just wasn't satisfied to say, oh, well, I guess that's, you know, they're gone somewhere. I, won't, I guess we'll come back tomorrow and see what's happening. No. He said, Adam, where are you? Now, I, I realize there was only two people and all of that, but I, I think it's significant that he said, Adam, where are you? He didn't just say, uh, you yeah, know, is anybody here? It wasn't something general. There was a specific. He addressed somebody, Adam. I'm talking to you, Adam. You're an individual. Adam, where are you? And, of course, they came out, and it became obvious what had happened. The Lord didn't soft pedal what had happened, did he? It was all brought out, and the consequences were there, but it wasn't with this kind of a spirit on the part of the Lord. I believe there was a grief. I believe there was a sadness in his heart. But if he had had a condemning, well, you're just got, going to get what you come, what's coming to you, kind of a spirit, he would have just walked away and left them to their fate, but he didn't. Not only did he call, Adam, where are you? Not only did he deal with their situation honestly, but he pre provided a solution, didn't he? And death began to enter. An animal had to die to provide a covering for their nakedness. But oh, think of the heart of God that's revealed in such a simple, simple thing. God reaching out to people. And ever since, God has been calling out to man reaching out to them with, because his heart is one of love and one of mercy. The original intention that he had, the original desire, the original purpose is, is not something that he's scrapped and said, oh, well, that didn't work. It's still there. And he calls and he calls and he calls. And so everything in the world hinges on what men do when he does call, doesn't it? You know what God speaks through, through nature? We know that. Uh, you know, we sang, How Great Thou Art, and, and there was a consciousness in that song about seeing, seeing God and the wonders of, and the beauties of creation. But you know, you have to have eyes to see that. There are a lot of people that look. But there's a lot of people who are willingly blind 
And the reason they're willingly blind is there's a hardness of heart at law that wants to go their own way, wants to be free to express their, their corrupted nature, and doesn't want to believe there's a God to whom they're accountable. And so we read in 1 Peter about men who are willingly ignorant. But yet God in his mercy has continued to dis put on display, amazing display, his greatness, his power, his Godhead. It's a voice that reaches out. It, it's, it transcends all human culture and all language. Everybody, I don't care where you're at, can look up and see, hey, there's somebody. There's somebody behind all of that. There's a God. And it's a, it's a way of God speaking to hearts. But there is a dimension that people need to understand. And that is that when God speaks to people, it is personal. It's not just a general voice. It's not just some, somebody, some nameless person in a group and God speaks and, and they hear that. I'll tell you, we got to come to the place where God speaks to us. I mean, think about how amazing that is. For someone so great, someone who could create the unnumbered stars, I mean, there's no way to number them. They, it's just big as trees. It goes on into, well, astronomical numbers. Uh, quite literally, beyond the comprehension of men, no matter how far they look, there's, there's more. God's greatness. I mean, you think about somebody, and we, we think somebody who can do all that. We think in such human terms, oh, surely somebody that great would not be interested in me as an individual. Oh, sure, he might just be great enough to give some sort of a blanket invitation and hope people, you know, some people will respond. That's not how it works. God is interested in individual people. And I tell you, you don't have to look any further than Jesus to see that. Because how did, you know, what was it that enabled Jesus? What was it that directed, I should say, who was it that directed Jesus to do and say and go to the things that he did to go the places that he went? It was the Father living in him. You look at Jesus, you were seeing the Father in action. You're seeing the one who made the stars in action. And we see him dealing with great crowds, yes, but we see him stopping to deal with individuals in need. Not always the people that you would think that he would be interested in. You know, every Sunday school child learns about Zacchaeus. This was a tax collector, not the most popular guy on the block. He was somebody that had, had hired himself out to Rome to collect taxes, and they were known, first of all, that, that alone made them, you know, not very welcome in their neighborhoods, 